Good morning, sunshine. I got home at like 10 last night and then we ordered pizza and I fell asleep within like five minutes. But I'm actually kind of happy I did that because I stayed up till 10 and I don't think I would have been able to do that unless I'd gone out and had a few Aperol spritzes. And now, like this morning, I've woken up at 7.30 so I feel like I'm kind of fixing my sleeping schedule a little bit. I'm gonna make myself a coffee. Not gonna lie, usually whenever I'm like, I'm not even hungover but I just love using the excuse that I had drinks last night as a reason to not get out of bed because I love not getting out of bed. It's like my favorite thing ever. But on Saturday, I'm getting a boob job. I talk more about it on my podcast, but I am a very flat chested little girl. Usually like not a problem, but I find myself being a bit self-conscious about it over the years. So I thought, why not get a boob job? And I'm getting a mini boob job. Like I have an A at the minute and I'm getting a small B. So we might not even notice the difference, to be honest, but I think for me, it will make a good positive impact on my life, I think. I also got diagnosed, if you listen to my podcast, you'll know all of this, but if you don't, then you're probably really out of the loop, but I got diagnosed with cancer, I was just fucking grim. I had this like tumor on my arm, not tumor, like I thought it was a fatty cyst, that's what everyone was telling me, it was a fatty cyst, but then I actually, went to get tested and it's a rare cancer. So I'm actually really different and one in a million, literally, I am one in a million. So I'm just waiting to get a surgery to get it taken out. So once I get it taken out, it should be good to go. I am gonna have like a big scar as well. Like, can you see it there? But with all these things, like cancer, having a big scar, I'm like, why the fuck am I not gonna get a boob job? Like, really put things into perspective for me. I've always wanted one, but I was kind of like, Oh, maybe I should wait till I have children first and then get one. I'm not fucking waiting 15 years. I want to have children when I'm like 35, realistically. What if I fucking, what if the cancer spreads before then and then I die without ever having boobs? Fuck that. Not doing that. Hi, I'm just editing this and I feel like I didn't really give you enough information. I kind of just skimmed over. Maybe I did give you enough information, but I'm an oversharer. But I was like a little bit hungover when I was talking about it. I was very, very tired. I was practically half asleep. But just a little bit more information in case you're wondering. It's a skin cancer called DFSP. It's got a really long name, but I don't know how to say that name. So that's an abbreviated version. It's super not fatal. 99% chance of surviving it. So unless I'm that 1%, I think I'm pretty good. All I need to do is get it removed from my arm. I don't really need to get like anything else done, hopefully. The tumor has a very high chance of not spreading. Like it probably most likely shouldn't spread. It wasn't caused by anything that I did. Um, The doctor has assured me of that because I, I don't know, like I feel like I kind of, I don't have health anxiety in any way. I convinced myself I manifested it to begin with. I manifested me having cancer, which is a horrible, horrible thing to say. And like probably shouldn't actually say that out loud. But like when I was younger, like I always just like thought like, oh yeah, one day I'm probably gonna get cancer. And then I did. And then I was like, oh God, did I fucking cause it? But I didn't cause it. It was a gene mutation, not my fault. I feel like I always get questions about it. It is just that it was like a little lump in my arm and it kind of slowly grew over a couple of years. And then the skin on top started going like a bit more, it looked like a little bit bruised. Um, so I got a little biopsy done of it and tested it, came back cancerous. So yeah, I'm going to have to get like a big chunk here taken out. Um, hopefully it's not going to be too big. But they just need to take out the surrounding tissue around the tumour just to ensure that it's all gone. But at the end of the day, I'm going to have tits, so it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. Cancer is very serious and it's important that I get taken out. But apart from that, all good. The recovery for the boob job, I'll be in bed for like probably two weeks and I can't go to the gym for six weeks. I actually really started enjoying going to the gym, which I never thought I would say. It's not a very like on brand thing for me, but I just love the routine of it. I love doing my little 12, 3.30 um, and I'm gonna really miss it whenever I can't do that for six weeks. So I'm making myself get up every single day this week and go to the gym. So that's why I'm actually getting out of bed today instead of lying there hungover. My coffee isn't that exciting. I just use almond milk. I use these like vanilla drops from my protein. Something that's really elevated my coffee though is using glass straws. I used to use stainless steel, but glass straws have really changed the game for me. I'm also just gonna sit and ice roll my face. This is a real blessing if you've been drinking like five up rolls the night before. Ready for the gym, let's go baby. This is my hack, if there's like a t-shirt that I have that I need to put in the wash, I wear it to the gym. I love wearing a white t-shirt to the gym. Sometimes when I do like my ab workouts, I get a little bit self-conscious, just because like when I'm doing like my curl, you know when you do like a crunch, sometimes there's a, there's a bit of stuff going on, like roll wise, uh, which is no problem, because of course I'm, I'm crunching, but there's too many hot people at my gym. At the gym I go to, I literally like bump into someone I know every time, and like, 
not even that there's just like loads of like beautiful people and everyone's like kind of young and stuff when i first started going i was like oh my god this is fucking horrible like i don't like this at all like when i go to the gym i don't want to see anyone i know because it's like not embarrassing but <laughs> it's just like a humbling experience seeing someone you know at the gym and also like i go i'm not like a like a, i don't look good whenever i work out like i'm go fucking bright red and like so sweaty but now i like i've gotten really used to it and i position myself in the gym that i'm like looking in the mirror and in the reflection i can see anyone who walks in the gym and it's like my form of entertainment now and I went to the gym when I was on holiday there like to the hotel gym and I was the only person in the gym and I was like what the fuck this is so fucking boring like now I actually need like I, I crave the whole like awkwardness and like um, the awkward encounter seeing every ex I've ever had they all go to the same gym like I, I love the drama of it all now I can't imagine not having that okay back from the gym and I've decided I'm just gonna have a proper little pamper day. I was meant to like see a friend today, but it got cancelled. So like I literally have nothing to do. So I just felt like it was a sign from the universe telling me to have a little pamper day. I'm gonna use my new face. This is like the machine that's meant to like give you like really sculpted cheekbones and shit. But um, you have to use it consistently every day. And I use it maybe what, twice a year. And then when it doesn't work immediately, I'm like, what the fuck? Scam. Anyway, I stopped at the white company on the way back from the gym don't often go in there to be honest but i've been craving a pair of like white pajamas for a long time and i'm obviously gonna be spending a lot of time in pajamas soon because i'm getting a boob job if you didn't know so i thought what better time to buy a nice pair of pajamas so this is there just like a long slit it's it's really not that exciting um it's exciting to me though because if you look close up it's got those lines in it like hotel pillows do you know what I'm trying to say? I also got a pair of cashmere socks. Call me crazy. My mom always gets me a pair of nice socks and really soft socks for Christmas, like every year. And I wear them so much, but I've only got like two pairs, which is really all you need for cashmere socks. But I just, they were beside the till. That They always sucker me with that. Things beside the till, especially like in Sephora. Have you ever been to Sephora? They've got these like minis by the till. And whenever I see a mini of a product, I'm thinking that's 2.50 max max and i pick them up and i throw them in my basket and then that that's where they get me they really get me on the minis because it's actually a lot more than 2.50 per product but i love minis i got a little mini powder and i put it in my bag and i bring it with me because i'm quite a i'm a bit of a greasy bitch so it's always good to have a little powder and so you know what yes they suckered me and i spent a lot of money at sephora when i went last time but oh my god they have a sephora in london no doesn't really like hit the same like i'm not gonna go like my like that's the most exciting thing for me is if i ever go to like america or really pretty much any other country they've always got sephora and i always go and it's a hoot but now they've got it in london they've literally got it in the same shopping center as the places that i went to get the white company stuff didn't go and then i also got some silk scrunchies for my hair because i'm probably gonna want to put my hair up the whole week that i'm in bed i think silk ones are meant to be better for your hair i was gonna wash my hair and have like a proper like hair mask pamper situation going on but I feel like I could probably get another like two days out of this hair, so I'm gonna do it. I'm not washing my hair necessarily, that is not me. I'm getting quite peckish, so I think I'm gonna put on my pajamas and then we can go make some food. My new pajamas are on. I love them so much. I'm gonna put my socks on as well. I'm feeling great, feeling clean, skincare is all done. I've been seeing people eat a lot of salads recently and usually like that does not appeal to me. Like I don't like salads. I'm not a salad girl. Not that I don't like vegetables, I'm just like I want if I was to have a plate of vegetables, I would want them like roasted or like honey glazed just fried anything nicer than just like fucking raw vegetables like that just doesn't appeal to me but i've been seeing people eat this thing called like chinese chicken like oriental chicken salad and it actually looks quite nice and by the way i'm cracking open a cold one i'm having a ginger and lemon kombucha but it actually didn't look too bad so i thought i'll give it a go now chinese leaf was like my my base some broccoli some tomatoes a carrot and then this is the chicken that I'm gonna use. Okay, so I chopped the cabbage up really small, kind of like a slaw. I did my carrot with like a peeler because I like it when it's um, in ribbons. That's my favorite way of eating carrot because otherwise I find it too hard to like chew and like, I don't want that like texture in a salad. And then I got my broccoli and then I've got my cherry tomatoes. Now it's time to do the chicken. What I'm gonna do is just fry it in some oil and put this on it, Chinese five spice. Okay, while the chicken is like browning up a bit. I'm gonna make the dressing for the salad. So I'm gonna use some sesame oil. I'm gonna use some soy sauce, some rice wine vinegar, garlic granules, some salt. And then I think we need a bit of sweetness with it as well. So I'm gonna put in some honey. 
And then I'm shaking it all up in a cocktail shaker. Oh, I also just found some chopped ginger, which I'm gonna put in the dressing too. Okay, let's assemble. Put this in first. The carrot, broccoli, tomato. Oh my God, this is literally like the TikToks that I've seen. This is crazy. I also love with salads, like you can have a fucking, like this is a mixing bowl, but I'm gonna eat the full thing because it like, it's just vegetables. The chicken. I also put some sriracha on the chicken because I love sriracha. And finally, the dressing. I'm gonna mix this all up. Okay, that's it all mixed up. I also just put some extra salt and pepper in it, and now it's time to try. Cheers. Oh my god. That is so fucking good. What the fuck? Sorry, not to swear, but what the fuck? I honestly don't think I've ever eaten a salad as nice as this. Wow. Okay, I brought my salad to bed, which actually isn't usually like me. I don't really eat in bed, but I'm just in a, like a pampered princess mood. And I feel like eating salad in bed in a fucking huge bowl is giving pamper day. I've got Ted last one. Hector's doing some yoga over there. Don't mind him. I finished my dinner. It was fucking delicious. It was so nice. I really cannot recommend it enough. And you could customize it to like however you want. Like you could put in whatever vegetables you like in it. I think next time I'll make it, I'm gonna put some like Brussels sprouts in it. I love Brussels sprouts. I don't understand the hate they get. Time to feed the cats. You know, sometimes I watch TikToks and I get really like, shut up. I get really self-conscious about the kind of food that I feed my cats. I just feed them, what is this, Felix? Like, very bog standard cat food. And then I watch people's TikToks and like, it's them feeding their cat like organic fucking Erewhon cat food with like cod liver oil and all this like extra like bougie healthy stuff. But then anytime I try to feed my cat anything like a bit nicer, a bit more expensive than this, they turn their nose up at that and they won't eat it. And I'm thinking maybe is this like fast food for them? Is this like McDonald's and that's why they want it? Maybe. Okay, it is 6.30. But we've got one last step for our pamper night. Gonna make some chai tea. I went to Dishoom the other day. I've always heard of people going to Dishoom for like dinner. It's like an Indian restaurant that has like several restaurants in London, several locations. And I've always seen people go for dinner, but they actually do breakfast as well. And me and my family went for breakfast because they were over visiting me because we ran the marathon, girl boss. And we all went for breakfast there. And it's basically like anything you would expect to see on a breakfast menu, but like an Indian style version of it. So like, you know how we would have typically like sausage baps and shit like that, like sausage and egg baps. They would have like sausage naans. That's what I got. I got sausage naan, vegan sausage naan with masala beans. It was incredible. It was so good. If you come to London, go to this room for breakfast. It was amazing. Still haven't been for dinner though, so I'm gonna go for dinner and I'll report back. But they had this chai there um, and it was bottomless and I'm not joking, I had like 10 cups of chai tea. I'm not usually like a crazy chai person either, but it was so fucking good. And as I was walking out, I saw a tin of the chai and you can buy it and bring it home. So obviously I fucking did that. So we're gonna open it today and make some chai tea for a pumper night. Okay, my tea has been simmering for about 15 minutes. Ah! Sorry guys. Also put my little silk scrunchie in. I look kind of terrifying, but I'm also just like at my peak, I think. Like I'm matching silk scrunchie to my new fucking white company pajamas. It's just really where I thrive. Anyway, I'm gonna put some milk in. I do love like the whole like days getting longer, you know, it stays bright really late thing when, when that happens when it gets to spring however on days like this like when i want to go to bed at six it does kind of cramp my vibe when it's still like proper daylight outside but let's normalize being a lady of leisure okay now i need to strain this into this because it has like leaves and herbs and spices and shit in there oh oh my god did I just fucking do that with not one single drop of spillage? That is incredible for me. Look at all the stuff that was left from it. Crazy. Mm -hmm. That was something I was meant to do was get a teapot for, for me to put my chai in because currently it's in a measuring jug, which isn't really fitting the aesthetic that I'm going for. I'm gonna light this candle. I love this. It's like a little jar, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before, but whenever I only found out about this a couple months ago, and when I did, let me tell you, it rocked my world. All right, you just go like this, take it out. Crazy. All lit. Oh, this is amazing, guys. This is so nice. Let's see if it tastes as good as whenever I had it in actual Dishoom. Wow. 
stunning. It's just actually stunning. I think I'm gonna end the, this vlog here. I'm gonna start again tomorrow because I really enjoy vlogging. It gives me, gives me something to do because, well, especially this week, I, for some reason, I've literally nothing on. Until Saturday when I get my boob job. I wasn't gonna vlog it because I didn't want to be like a bad influence on anyone because surgery is quite a, like a, I don't, I just do not want to influence anyone to change their body. Because I know whenever I was young and 14 and impressionable, if my, like, not saying that I'm anyone's favourite YouTuber, but in case I was, like, I feel like my favourite YouTuber got a boob job, it might have, like, like, put that in my head to get, like, that I need to get one. Can't decide if I should vlog or not. I think it could be a really funny vlog. I don't know, my sister's coming up to look after me for the weekend so she could, like, video me being all, like, delirious and stuff. Oh, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I didn't, I don't really think I did much, but you kept me company, and that's what's important. Okay, love you, bye.